Hey everybody, Mike here, and it's time for another Transformers Rise of the Beast video. Today we're going to be doing a breakdown of the second trailer, and there is certainly a lot to digest in this one. It was way more action-packed than our first teaser trailer, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and break this down. Uh, I'm not going to be looking at every frame. I'm going to be focusing on the things that might need a little bit more explanation, or explain something that we know of through interviews, etc., that might have some sort of relevance, or I'm going to be looking at some hard-to-spot things as well. So let's go ahead and start off. Uh, the first main thing that I want to talk about is in this uh, early shot in the trailer, we see the Twin Towers in the New York skyline. Of course, this movie will be taking place in 1994, so they are adding that to for historical significance. Um, there is also one other shot later in the trailer but also has the Twin Towers in the background. Uh, it is when the Terracons are coming out of the water. And that is just a super cool shot. From left to right, you've got Battle Trap, Scourge, and Nightbird. Uh, also, we have this very quick shot of Elena looking at this yellow stone that emits a light beam and it transitions into the next shot with Optimus Prime looking into the sky with a yellow beam. I assume that is from that stone. I don't know if it's actually happening at the same time or if those shots are just spliced together for the trailer, uh, but it does seem like that stone is definitely going to hold some type of significance in this movie. What it does, I don't know. Evan, of course, we do have Unicron in this movie. Uh, the shots of Unicron in this movie, however, do not necessarily show that Unicron is going to be an immediate threat to Earth, however. The shots that we see seem to be uh, chosen in a way where it might appear like he's close to Earth and that he is an immediate threat, but there is the possibility that these are flashbacks as well. Notably, when we first see him, it looks like he's approaching Earth and he's right there, but if we take a little bit of a closer look, you see uh, some rings around the planet that he's approaching. So judging by an interview that director Stephen Cable Jr. had at CinemaCon and looking at this shot, I'm pretty sure that is the Maximals' home planet. The Maximals apparently are not from Cybertron and they are from their own separate planet. So I'm pretty sure that Unicron probably consumed their world and that they ended up going to Earth. And next up, we have a very blink and you'll miss it shot. I'm talking, I didn't even notice this until I came across it by chance when pausing the trailer. Uh, but when we are looking at Anthony Ramos's character Noah, you see Bumblebee in the background in his Camaro form, and you see RC in her Ducati motorcycle form. But something notable is that RC does have a hollow driver. Uh, hollow drivers are not new to the franchise. We saw them in the first Transformers film. Uh, we've seen them most recently in Transformers The Last Night with Mohawk. Uh, but she does have her own hollow driver. And it looks like maybe they're trying to pretend that they did not reveal themselves to Noah. But Optimus Prime comes in and he knows the truth. And uh, speaking of Optimus Prime coming in, he seems to be very hesitant with humans. And that goes along with a recent interview uh, from Lorenzo de Bonaventura saying that Optimus Prime is not quite used to humanity yet and trusting humans. Um, and it is very unlike what we see in the Michael Bay movies. So I'm assuming throughout this movie, uh, Optimus Prime will be warming up to the human race, and uh, by the end of it, he should uh, be pretty good friends with Noah and Elena. Now, we get a few shots of Air Razor in this trailer, along with the rest of the Maximals, but uh, the difference is, is we have seen the other Maximals transform. We have not seen that with Air Razor yet at all, and even on toy packaging, she has not been shown in robot form. Now, while her toy does transform, we have not seen any 
CGI render evidence that she transforms in the movie. Uh, she is only seen in her bird form, and even when she's speaking in the trailer. So I have to assume that she's not going to be transforming into a robot form, and to me that tells me that she might end up dying pretty early. Uh, who knows for sure, but that's the vibe that I get from it. Usually when something is like that in a trailer or marketing where it's like, that seems a little suspicious. It's probably because that character is not in the movie as long as you would expect. Next we have this awesome shot of Scourge uh, going up to Unicron and you actually get to see his face. Well, kind of. You can see his eyes open. He really doesn't have a super visible face form, but you do get to see his eyes and he is absolutely ginormous he is a big dude as mirage says later in the trailer yes he's very big he's bigger than planets because he eats planets so very cool that we get to see his face or eyes um it is something that in the michael bay movies and specifically transformers the last night it seemed like we would never end up seeing that so it's very cool to see an actual physical form of unicron and next up, we have Bumblebee jumping into action off of the back of Stratosphere. And this seems to be toward the end of the movie, uh, toward the final battle. And something of note is that when Bumblebee is stabbed by Scourge, pretty sure he ends up dying here. And there's even more evidence for that because when Bumblebee is shown jumping out of Stratosphere, the Autobot insignia on his forehead is missing. And what do we know about Scourge is that he collects the insignias of the Transformers that he kills. So I'm pretty sure in that museum scene, Bumblebee is going to die. How he comes back to life, I am not sure, but you'll notice in these trailers, any type of group shot, Bumblebee does seem to be missing, so I assume he's going to get killed off maybe in the first quarter, first half of the movie. They're going to have a section where we think he's dead, and he will probably appear somehow at the end of the film. Like I said, how he comes back to life, don't know, but it is kind of funny considering Bumblebee also died in the Bumblebee film from 2018, so in this potential new Transformers universe, it's going to be two movies and two deaths for Bumblebee, but he comes back both times, so that's kind of funny. And then quite possibly, the biggest part of this trailer is that Wheeljack has his ear flaps, and it's not in, they're not in every shot, and in fact, when they do show up, it's when he's walking up, and they end up transforming out as he's walking. I know that these ear flaps were not there in the first original cut of this movie. I know that when the trailer came, or actually not even the trailer, but the toy leaks and the art came out and they saw some uh, fan disappointment and outcry, I know they went back and added those ear flaps. How often will they be there? I don't know if they'll be there throughout the whole movie or if they just show up once in a while because he has to end up transforming them out. But uh, it looks like they did look at the fan disappointment and added in those ear flaps, which I'm very glad because they are so iconic to Wheeljack's design in all other Transformers media. So the fact that they're there makes me feel better, even if his face doesn't quite look like how it looked in the Bumblebee movie, which I think was peak Wheeljack design. I really like the design in the Bumblebee movie, but at least he does have the ear flaps this time around. Next up, we have this area of lava where Elena is hanging on for dear life. This was the only shot in the trailer where I'm like, mm, that doesn't look that great. It looks very green screeny. Uh, I do hope they're able to touch up on that a little bit but it definitely looks like, oh, she's on a set on a green screen and they just put this lava underneath her. It does not look blended in very well. Uh, it definitely needs some touching up before the final cut of the movie. Uh, next up, we have a mech suit. Noah 
is wearing a mech suit, which uh, is something not new to Transformers media. Spike Witwicky in the original cartoon, the G1 cartoon, also wore a mech suit, and the mech suit was also worn by, I believe, Miko in Transformers Prime. So Noah's going to get a mech suit here. It looks kind of very Iron Man-like, which is pretty neat. And then the mech suit is also seen a little bit later at the very end of the trailer. Bumblebee is, well, first of all, uh, Mirage gives him the mech suit and it starts transforming from his hand. And in the next shot, we see Bumblebee transforming with Noah riding on the back of him. And then as B transforms, Noah hops off and he's off doing his own thing while Bumblebee's shooting and it's just pure chaos ensues. Very cool shot. That's my favorite shot of the trailer. Super neat looking. Uh, Evan, in this battle, we do have a lot of Scorpinox. It's not just one Scorpinox, it's multiple Scorpinox. So uh, they're somewhat similar to the design of what appeared in Transformers 1. Uh, however, uh, they are scorpion robots, so there's not much you can do to make them look different. But there are multiple of them this time. There's quite a few. We see them as part of this amazing one-shot. Great one -er. Uh It starts off with Optimus Primal and Noah in his mech suit. And he sw and Primal swings down. He's taken out a Scorpinox. And then it goes down to the ground. We see Rhinox. We see RC shooting lasers everywhere. And then she meets up with Wheeljack. And they're all shooting together. Very cool shot. Love a good one -er. And then, of course, at the end of the trailer is that incredible... Bumblebee and Noah shot and I gotta say this was a terrific trailer I liked it a lot more than the first one super jam-packed with cool stuff can't wait for this movie coming out June 9th did you guys spot anything in the trailer but I might have missed let me know in the comments section down below and make sure to follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of future uploads. And until next time, I'm Mike. See you guys.